Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome back to another episode of Nishquick Talks. As you guys can tell, it's a different orientation this time around, and I got a new mic. I'm trying to test this out. I'm trying to test different orientations out with this new like um, lapel mic. So let me know how this sounds. Let me know how this looks. Let me know what you think of this different orientation. I wanted to kind of move away from my desk for Niche Quick Talks just to make it a little more casual and give me some more mobility. And I'm going to have this and maybe a few other videos go up um, scheduled during this week because I'll be on vacation for about a week. So I won't have time to live stream or do any videos. So I want to have a few shorts and videos out by then. So this casual niche quick talks is going to be one of them. And as you guys can tell with the title of this video, I'm asking a very strange question. It might sound like a very silly question as well, but I nonetheless wanted to ask this to myself and maybe to you guys especially a lot of my returning viewers who I see in a lot of the comments of my content. Am I even a Nintendo YouTuber anymore? And that's really funny because I never really used to classify myself as a Nintendo YouTuber. Even when I was just really casually doing content in like 2021, 2022, Nintendo games would be part of a lot of what I would talk about, like obviously. Uh, the Zelda games, Xenoblade, Fire Emblem, Metroid, a little bit of Mario stuff here and there. And Nintendo content is a lot of what I watch. I watch a lot of general Nintendo content, some Nintendo rumor and speculation content, and I even threw my hat into the ring a few times, especially last year, to discuss various rumors, leaks, and general murmurings going on about various games that are about to release and various other pieces of Nintendo Switch hardware or rumors surrounding all that stuff. And even this year, I've posted a few videos about rumors regarding Monolith Soft's next game, what the next game they're going to be working on with the Switch 2 is going to look like, what Takahashi's new RPG is going to look like. And I've also talked about some of my own kind of speculation regarding the next generation of Nintendo Switch, what the Switch 2 is going to look like with backwards compatibility and all that. But what I've noticed is I've noticed for myself is I've noticed a stark difference in the content that I've been lately trying to put out on the channel versus a lot of other general Nintendo content creators. And I just want to make this apparent. None of what I'm trying to say here is to say that I want to make better content than any other channel, or I'm not even trying to say that some channel's content is not as good as any other channel or mine. That's definitely not what I'm trying to say, and that's missing the whole point of this video. I'm just saying what I am feeling currently in terms of the world of Nintendo, Nintendo Switch, and JRPGs and what that means for the content that I'm going to put out on the channel going forward and how things might change here and there. So I'm just kind of rambling. I kind of need to get to the point. So um, what a lot of you guys might have noticed, especially in this year of 2024, is I have been heavy into JRPGs. I started this year with a video talking about not only Xenoblade, but Xenosaga. I just had this Xenosaga video idea on a whim and I just put it out and I didn't think it would do that well, but I was actually kind of blown away at how amazingly it did. And even before that, I had a lot of Persona 3 Reload videos that I was making and I was realizing that I am starting to break into a new niche when it comes to these kinds of videos and the usual Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom content that I was making before wasn't really the only kind of successful content that I would be making on the channel. And I've always wanted to talk about JRPGs, my experience with these kinds of games and what I truly feel about them, what makes them different from other games. And I am really happy that that's succeeding because that's my favorite genre. And as many of you guys have noticed, 
even after that Xeno Saga video and a lot of the other Atlas videos that I've been making relating to Persona, SMT, Metaphor Fantasio, I also delved a bit into the Final Fantasy niche as well, and that's been pretty successful. And I want to make a few more Final Fantasy videos in the future as well. But I look at this portfolio of content that I've put out on the channel in 2024, and it's noticeably different from last year. I haven't talked about the Legend of Zelda series, which is another one of my favorite video game franchises. I think I only have like one or two Zelda videos that I put out this entire year. And not much on the Fire Emblem series, not much on Mario, and, uh, and then again, I, I've never been like that big of a Mario fan compared to like Xenoblade, Fire Emblem, and The Legend of Zelda and stuff. But I realized that there are so many other videos I wanted to make about Fire Emblem Three Houses versus Engage, and my experience with the Metroid Prime trilogy, and my thoughts on the Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom, like a full in-depth discussion of all that, which I'll get to a little bit later, but. I just haven't gotten around to it. And one of the reasons why I think so is I think just particularly in this year alone, the whole discussion about Nintendo and Nintendo Switch has been entirely focused in the direction of what is to come versus what we currently already have right now. Like, so much discussion is centered around the next generation of Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch 2, and what games are going to be coming out on that future hardware. And I look at Nintendo in 2024, and there's not a whole lot of games that really blew my mind and really interested me in this year versus last year. Last year, I was all over the place. I had Fire Emblem Engage to start off the year. Metroid Prime Remastered right after that. And then, of course, the two big ones for me were Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which were both amazing and awesome games that I really enjoyed. And then even later on, we had things like Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Super Mario RPG, and like a lot of games are just constantly churning out on the Nintendo Switch. And I think I mentioned this in maybe some prior live streams or during my Nintendo Direct discussions and live streams and stuff, but there was just a whole influx of Mario games this year, which I just was not really excited for. I, I think I did this count in my Nintendo Direct live stream reaction, where I realized since Super Mario Bros. Wonder, we've been getting so many Mario games, one after the other after the other. Let's, let's count it, actually. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Super Mario RPG was right after that, and then Mario vs. Donkey Kong, and then Princess Peach Showtime, and then after that I think is Luigi's Mansion 3 HD, and what was after that? Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake, which was probably, I think that was before Luigi's Mansion, and then Mario and Luigi Brothership, and I am missing one more. I'm missing one more, but I can't really think about it now. I can't think of it right now because I remember that there were eight. My point is, with me not being as much of a Mario fan, this year was kind of a drought, but I've also been seeing a lot of Mario fans still constantly pining for what is next to come, what is to come next, what is after this massive influx of Mario games just thrown out at you at once. They still want to know what's happening next. And for me, this year has been a time to just breathe and relax and go back to older games. And I'm still just noticing people online looking at what's to come in the future. What's, what's next? What's next? And of course, we're playing games that have come out this year, but there are so many games that I'm realizing that I haven't even touched from last year, the year before, the year before that, and maybe even like 10 years ago, 10, 20 years ago. Like, I'm doing a PS1 binge this year. I played three amazing PlayStation 1 games, and I'm absolutely mind blown, and I can't wait to play more. But my point is, it, this year was a little dry for Nintendo, and I, I feel that way, and many, many of us did as well. But 
I just don't feel like I'm in the mood to talk about Nintendo as much as I used to. And like, of course, the elephant in the room is the Nintendo Switch 2. And we can talk about things so much regarding a console, which I don't really think once things are announced, it's going to be happy, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be relieving that we finally know what this thing is. But at the same time, it's go in the end, it's going to be a Switch, which is more powerful. I, I don't see what else is there to talk about the console. It's, to me, this hype cycle isn't as exciting and as invigorating and as full of potential discussion as it was for the NX before the Switch released or was announced, or even Project Cafe. You guys remember Project Cafe with the Wii U? I very vaguely remember it because I was a kid back then, but I was remembering Project Cafe, that's not the name of the console, what's it going to be like? I remember people were throwing out names left and right, not even considering the fact that they were going to piggyback off the success of the Wii. I thought that what we were going to get was something along the lines of like a PS4 or Xbox One. But when I saw the gamepad, I was very interested to see what Nintendo was going to do. I was like, oh, your typical Nintendo kind of twist on things. Let's see what they do with it. And of course, it was an absolute atrocity. And I don't like to remember that time as a gamer, but that's whatever. But my point is, we kind of already know that this is going to be a successor to Nintendo Switch. We already know it's going to be a Switch, but more powerful. We already know it's most likely going to use DLSS. So what is there at this point of discussion and speculation for someone like me to really throw my hat into the ring? That's why I never really talked about Switch too much on the channel. I would listen to videos, I would listen to people talk about it, I would watch videos on my own, but in the end I just was starting to hear some of the same stuff over and over again. And with many of us expecting announcements to happen at various times this year and us not getting anything, I looked back inside myself and I realized something. I am seeing pretty relatively good success on the channel for the size that I am and I'm very thankful for that. I'm seeing a lot of returning commenters, a lot of people coming back to the channel to um, tell me what they think of the videos that I'm putting out and what they think about the topics that I'm talking about and all that. But what I'm realizing is in the end, whether I play Nintendo games or RPGs or whatever it is, in the end, I want to talk about the games. I want to talk about the games that I'm playing and in the end, what I want the Niche Quick Pops channel to be all about. And I think I talked about this in my 1K special, but what I want this channel to be all about is me sharing my video game experiences with you guys. And that's another reason why the EXP podcast is called the EXP podcast. I bring people on the show to talk about their experiences and share our own experiences. And I want that to continue. No form of speculation content on something that's non-existent is going to change that. And no videos of me talking or trying to talk about things that I may not be as interested in are going to change something like that. And yeah, that, I, I, I just kind of rambled on a little bit there, but I want to get back on to track about one thing that I was trying to say a little bit earlier. And that is how I haven't really made a video on the Legend of Zelda series recently. And that, I don't know what you guys have felt about that, but looking back at some of my older Tears of the Kingdom videos, I had, I've always had a feeling in my mind that like, oh, what if people want to see more Zelda stuff? What if people want to see more of me talking about Zelda and Tears of the Kingdom and all that? But I have, I, I gotta be honest, there was something that, like, a little... I don't know how to say this. There was something during the months following Tears of the Kingdom that soured me a little bit when it came to 
the fan base, the discourse, the discussions, and the overall just state of the Legend of Zelda series. And I will be honest, around December, a lot of that kind of um, kind of distaste and that dissatisfaction kind of boiled to a not a fever pitch, but it came to such a head where me and my buddy Skylink Shock had a very kind of passionate discussion about this during our live reaction to the Game Awards in December of 2023 of last year. And I was actually very close to sitting down on camera and making a full-on rant video about what I thought about Tears of the Kingdom and the fan base and a lot of that. And I don't know if I'll still do that. I don't know if I want to do that because a lot of that would be me just airing out a lot of grievances and I don't know if that's something I really want to do for the channel unless people really want to he hear what I think about the game. And I don't hate the game and I've talked about this with many people, I don't hate the game at all, but after taking a step back, after realizing what the game was trying to do and after realizing what I wanted from the game and what I got, it was, it, it was very drastically different and I made a few videos about this. I, my most successful video on the channel is titled, it's still the most successful video actually, it's the most watched video on the entire channel. It's titled, I'm worried about the future of the Legend of Zelda series and I still feel that way. And another video was titled something like uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom's uh, story disappointed me or something. And I still stand by my opinions of what I'm saying in a lot of these videos. But I want to bring it back to a little bit of the fan discourse that kind of stopped me from making a lot of Zelda videos. <laughs> and a lot of it boils down to uh, the lead up to Tears of the Kingdom had a lot of people feeling similarly about things. People felt like they wanted a better story. People felt like they wanted newer things to do. And a lot of our um, wishes and desires for the game were uh, kind of parallel. It was like we, we all unanimously felt the same thing. And then the game came out, we played the game, and many of us felt one way, many of us felt another way. I was sort of in the middle because I wanted to play the game, let it kind of marinate in my mind, and I didn't really want to make a full decision until after I kind of took a step back from the game, made some videos on it, talked to some friends. And when I landed on some decisions, some takes, some opinions, and when I put them out there, such as I wanted a better story, I was hoping for a better story, I notice issues with the story and I notice issues that are big glaring issues that could have been fixed, could have been changed, which I didn't resonate with. I was immediately shot down by fervent and very um, passionate fans of the series saying, but, but why? The Legend of Zelda never placed emphasis in the story. The Legend of Zelda never had that good of a story. The, the Legend of Zelda never really put emphasis on anything story and character related. And I felt like a lot of the discourse surrounding a lot of that and a lot of people saying that in, that, in those moments, especially last year, especially when various interviews came out, when Aonuma and Fujibayashi were kind of giving some clarification about what happened with some of the events of the game and the lore and all that. I it, it almost felt to me like people loved the game so much or they loved the idea of this game being so perfect that they wanted to just kind of protect it and they just deflected any sort of criticism. And I, it just didn't feel like a very fun game to talk about after that. When I would say, hey, I, I don't think this was a very good idea. I didn't have fun in this part of the game. I didn't like this story beat in the, the game. And people would automatically say, no, no, that, that's not true. 
um, the game is perfect. And people would automatically just deflect any sort of possible criticism pointed towards the game. And it's not anything that was po uh, supposed to be um, full of hate or negativity. It was just me noticing things that I just probably didn't vibe with or I wish that could have been better. And But on the other hand, there are many friends who love the game more than I did and who have very like good quality conversations with me and many other people about the game. Like I've done EXP podcast episodes with my buddy Yggdrasil. I even had the pleasure to have Ed from Triforce Trends on the show. And we had some very great discussions, me and these guys just talking about the game, what worked, what didn't work. And we could both see our point of view. Whereas other people would say, oh, who cares about the Sheik attack? Was that ever something that mattered? Was that ever something that um, they were supposed to talk about or acknowledge? When I remember a lot of these people, like I said, during the lead up to this game, our feelings and desires were kind of like, it was the same. And a lot of these people wanted extra context about what happened at the end of Breath of the Wild. A lot of people wanted to know why the Divine Beast stopped working? What, what, what happens from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom for the Divine Beast to disappear, for the Shrines to disappear? Because in the end, it's, it's the same world. Like, I don't want to get too much into a lot of that because it's a whole topic for another time. If you guys want to hear a video about me just like talking about my full extent of what I truly feel about Tears of the Kingdom, let me know in the comments below. I, I, I don't know if I can fit it in with the rest of the videos I have planned for this year, but we'll see. But to kind of just bring it all back home, bring it all back full circle, I guess, because I've been rambling so much with this video. <laughs> um, a lot of things just kind of coupled together with me not wanting to talk about Nintendo as much. And I know I still brand myself as Nintendo and JRPGs, but... Lately, I've just been more attuned with JRPGs. Like, I've been saying, like, the discourse of the Zelda fanbase, the different direction of the Legend of Zelda series, um, the influx of Mario games, I guess, the constant chatter about Nintendo Switch 2, which I don't feel like talking about very much, the uh, lack of exciting games coming out this year. And that's also not to say that every single game this year sucks. Like, look at this. Even though I'm late to the party, I still got this game. I'm very excited to play it. I'll probably play a bit of it on vacation. Um, I, I, I just got it, and I, I know I haven't played it much, but that's what playing long JRPGs does to you, and I'm, I'm very excited to see how that game plays. And not only that, I have Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door on the shelf. I'm gonna play that eventually, because I, I just wanna see what the game's all about. I wanna see what the hype is all about. Also, I am now very interested after seeing some reviews and videos. I'm interested to eventually try out Emmy of the Smiling Man, Famicom Detective Club. So this year wasn't like the worst year ever, but it wasn't a 2022. It wasn't a 2023, maybe not even a 2021. And with me just being in a more JRPG mood, more focused on story heavy games, more interested and in, more interested in that kind of stuff, that's just what I felt like talking about more and I don't think this video is going to do very good because I just rambled very very much and to anyone who's still watching thank you so much for watching I just kind of wanted to get this off my chest and I guess my question to you guys is are you guys fine with me delving more into story heavy JRPGs like Final Fantasy uh, the Xeno series of course Xenoblade and then uh, Persona, Mega 10, SMT, uh, Metaphor Refantasia. What do you guys think about all that? And do you guys want me to like start talking more about like Nintendo games? Um, that also depends on how I'm feeling about a lot of that stuff. But I, in the future, I might want to talk more. Like I was saying, like I want to talk more about Fire Emblem, maybe some Metroid, and like Zelda stuff. I'll if if an opportunity arises to talk about something Zelda. And if I can squeeze it in some more, I will. It was just a very good time to talk about Zelda last year because of the lead up to Tears of the Kingdom. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this and more in the comments below. 
This is Anish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like, I don't know, a Nintendo game on the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you guys in the next one later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.